Hi there, my name is Katherine Guidry. I'm a wedding photographer. I've been doing this for almost 15 years now. And if you're someone who's preparing to photograph your very first wedding, I'm excited to give you some of my top tips to help you get organized and get ready for that first big event. Even though my very first wedding was in the fall of 2008 and it feels like ages ago, I can still remember like yesterday all the things that unfolded with that event. And I can tell you that after photographing around 500 weddings since, I have learned a ton that can help you before you even step in to photograph your very first one. Speaking of tips, don't forget to download our free pricing guide or posing guide in the descriptions below. But let's talk about you as you're prepped for the very first wedding. The first thing that I wanna share with you is that before you even start to prep and think about photos, you need to get in touch with your client. As you're leading up to the wedding day, I want you to reach out to your client and set up a phone call with them at around the two week mark. Sure, you can have that meeting in person, you can have that meeting virtually, but even a quick phone call of anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour should also be completely fine. But you wanna schedule that very close to the wedding. I suggest about one to two weeks so that all the things that you talk about are fresh in the mind of both you and the client. I don't really love the idea of having that meeting the week of the wedding because there's a lot of things going on, guests are flying in, you know, there's just a lot of prepping that happens the week of. So really the two week mark is the sweet spot. During that phone call, you're going to create a timeline using a questionnaire or questions that you ask them during that phone call. If you've never done a wedding before, then you've probably never done a timeline or even thought about any of these questions before. And so we did put together at catgeducation.com a sample questionnaire and timeline for you to access if you so desire. During that phone call, you're gonna try to get to know everything you can about the most important members of the wedding party, of the family, those people that will be there closest to the client on the day of the wedding. You wanna get their names, first names are fine. You wanna have phone numbers of more than just the couple. You wanna have maybe some immediate family members, phone numbers, or the maid or matron of honor and the best man. I would suggest a minimum of five phone numbers that you can access on the day of the wedding if there is not a wedding planner. If there is a wedding planner present, then you really just need the client's phone numbers as well as the phone number for the planner. The planner is going to be your contact if there is a wedding planner the day of the wedding. Keep in mind that every planner is a little different. Planners range from coordinators all the way to full service planners, people who have actually helped them, you know, lay out every aspect of their day, their decor, all the things. If you're working with a full service planner, then you're probably not going to be creating their timeline as we're talking about during this particular video, particular podcast, depending on where you're tuning in. But if this is your first wedding like mine, there may not be a wedding planner present. So in addition to the fact that you're nervous and you feel like you don't yet have that experience, there's no one there to help you with the timeline and the questions and all the things. And so that's why I wanted to put this together. But if you are in that position, try to get those contact names and numbers and try to understand who's who on the wedding day. The reason why you wanna do that is because you can help them put together their photo list in advance of the wedding. One of the biggest mistakes that I see is when photographers and clients don't put together the wedding day timeline, the wedding day sample shot list in advance. And so the day of the wedding, it feels very hectic. There's a lot of emotions. There's a lot of people and opinions. And so those photo um, taking times can take a lot longer than they should. If you work on the list in advance, it gives you and the client to really iron out all the photos that they want. It gives them time to sit and think. And even in the time following the meeting, it gives them the ability to make revisions if they need. I do typically ask my clients that they make those revisions within about 72 hours, just so that we're not making revisions to the timeline the day before the wedding, whenever maybe even we have another event on the night before. The more you learn about the couple and those relationships during this time, the better. 
there's a lot of family dynamics that you are going to be stepping into as their photographer on the wedding day. So it's great to know if there's any uncomfortability with relationships or maybe someone that they really love that they want to make sure that you document. You really want to know these things in advance. Try to get those names and then when you arrive on the wedding day, try to get the names of who you're actually seeing in person. Put those faces to the names so that you can say, oh, okay, yeah, so and so so I remember your such and such a sister. Or if you don't remember all of those details, which is totally fine, when you ask their name, say, and how do you know the client? And they will be talking to you, sharing those details, and it also gives you time to better memorize their names. During this phone call, it's a great chance for you guys to discuss if there are any payments overdue or anything that needs to be ironed out in regards to the finances. It has happened in the past where a client was struggling to pay that final bill and I did make the decision to go ahead and show up, photograph the wedding. I felt like that was the right thing to do, but if there is that situation where maybe you haven't been paid yet for the work that you've done, just make sure that you do reserve those images, even if the service has been provided, until that final payment has been made. Once that final payment has been made, then you wanna deliver those images as soon as possible to the client. So let's talk about what if there is a coordinator there? What if there is someone that's going to be helping them on the day of the wedding? It's a good idea to also get in touch with them, get to know who they are, let them know who you are, and help them understand that you guys are all on the same team. As vendor partners working together to execute a wedding, everyone really has the same goal in mind, to help make a smooth, seamless day for the couple. And so reaching out to the coordinator in advance helps to create that rapport and you guys can also talk about any of the logistical questions that you may have had or that may come up during that initial call. So oftentimes I'll reach out to the coordinator in advance, I'll let them know that we have a call, I'll ask if there's any timeline in place. If there's not, and we're gonna be creating the timeline during the call, then I'll follow up with the coordinator after that call with the client and speak to them, make sure that there's no questions or anything that I need to know. And then we'll of course circle back to the client. So it's a lot of kind of back and forth, but it's totally worth it to make sure that everyone's on the same page. I do try to loop in the videographer as well to make sure that he or she knows the timeline and that everyone is following that timeline on the wedding day. We wanna make sure again that everybody's on that same team. I'm not sure how this is all gonna release as far as the dates go for these episodes, but I am also putting together an entire episode on the timeline specifically. In that video, I'll be talking about how many hours you need for first look, non-first look, so on and so forth. So be sure to check that out. When it comes to what you wear on the wedding day, I wanna make sure that you know weddings are a lot of physical activity. It was actually shocking to me the first time I photographed a wedding, how much physical work it was, and I can tell you after doing this for so many years, you have to dress appropriately. And that is multifaceted. When I say dress appropriately, I mean that when it comes to your shoes, you wanna wear something that's professional, something that looks appropriate for the occasion and you know is very dressy. I, I recommend maybe a closed toe shoe, but you also want shoes that are comfortable. I even oftentimes will change my shoes at the reception just to help me make it through the day, but having a comfortable pair of shoes, something that you can photograph in that you know just works well will go a long way. My very first wedding, I wore a pair of heels and it was one of the biggest mistakes I made. So I love Cole Haan's Grand Zeros. I usually put those on at the reception. They're a little bit more casual, but still very formal. And then um, during the wedding day, I usually photograph with a pair of booties. I love Mark Fisher's booties. And so that's usually what I wear when I'm photographing. They're comfortable. They're cute, they look good with dresses or pants, and so that's what I do. My husband, he wears any of Cole Haan's shoes. He's worn the Grand Zeros, but right now he's wearing a little bit more of a formal pair that he has, and um, they look really good with his suits. When it comes to the attire, you want to dress like a guest. So if you're a man and you're gonna be around a bunch of men in tuxes and suits, you might wanna consider wearing a suit. Wear something that matches the occasion. And 
if you're photographing a more casual event, maybe a rehearsal dinner, a welcome dinner, a wedding on the beach, then you're probably going to want to go with something a little bit more casual. Like if it is a beach wedding, for example, maybe a linen, something that would match the vibe. For me, I usually wear a suit, something black that can kind of allow me to blend in. You know, we are in each other's videos and photos on occasion, even if by accident. And so the polite thing is to wear something that is muted in color like black so that you don't stand out in the couple's photos. This is actually a dress that I plan to wear for weddings, but I'm actually gonna take it to the seamstress and get this little detail right here sewed up. I like to, I know it's just a little bit of skin, but um, I do feel like dressing in a way that's very modest and it keeps the attention off of us and on the client is the way to go. As a service provider, especially even in at any level, but especially at the luxury level, you really just want to be there to serve that client and not bring the attention to yourself. And so wearing something that's, you know, very reserved, covers your shoulders, it really sets you up to look very professional and to show up in the best way as far as what you're wearing for the client. Speaking of being there to serve your client, this is not an opportunity for you to pass out business cards or promote your business. If someone asks about your company, by all means, please do share, but really try to be cognizant of how you're doing that. When I first started photographing weddings, I would see vendor partners that would leave business cards out on the catered tables or scattered around the reception room. And what that does is it really cheapens the perception of that brand. And so if you wanna present yourself in a really strong, really luxury capacity, you don't want to pass out business cards at the wedding or anything like that. Even if someone does uh, stop me or ask me about my business at the wedding, I just give them my name. I just say, oh, thank you so much. You know, my name's Katherine Guidry. I am the photographer for the client. So I'm sure if you have any questions, you can ask them for my contact. And that's it. I don't spend a ton of time engaging because I'm there serving the client and I'm there doing well. And I know that if I do a good job for the client, that they will rave about me to their friends and family. A few things that you might want to bring with you on the wedding day are gonna be water, we use a Yeti water bottle with the screw cap so that it doesn't spill in our bags. We pack peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for every single wedding because they keep well and they really satisfy hunger whenever you feel like you haven't eaten for a long period of time on the wedding day. Oftentimes we are fed at the reception, sometimes a vendor meal, sometimes off the buffet. However, I have photographed rehearsal dinners and welcome parties, events where maybe I'm photographing up to six hours and there haven't been any opportunities for us to eat or any food that was reserved for us. And so we feel like it's important to pack our own food, pack our own snacks. Nutrigrain bars or protein bars are really great. They keep well also and water for sure. Water is huge. I know that we think we always will, you know, have that at our disposal during the wedding, but the truth is that you know, sometimes that water is reserved for the guests. And so we want to supply our own food and water. I also bring along some personal things like lipstick, a hairbrush, even things that I can share with the client, like bobby pins or safety pins. You just never know when those things are going to come in handy. Even an ink pen is one of our most requested items. I know these things don't have anything to do with photography, but at the end of the day, we're there to help. And even when there's a wedding planner, they're pulled in a ton of different directions. And so if we can step up and help out and, you know, kind of diffuse a potentially upsetting situation, it's nice to go ahead and do that. Two things I also always pack are gonna be earplugs. Those are gonna be huge. They will save your hearing. Um, actually, I'll say three things. Earplugs, sunglasses. Oh my gosh, especially being someone who photographs into the sun. I cannot tell you the amount of times that my eyes were just burning. Like I could just feel them hurting so bad. And so definitely pack um, sunglasses in your bag and also Tylenol or some sort of pain medication, just in case you end up with a headache or, you know, a backache or whatever, like the day of the wedding, you want to be able to have something like ibuprofen or Tylenol on hand to help you get through the rest of the wedding day. The water should definitely help with that too. But yeah, also keep those things on hand. Those are kind of like must haves in your bag. 
As far as the actual timeline, I do usually keep that on my phone. It's not a bad idea to have a printed copy that you can actually scratch through. We are usually working with a wedding planner and so they usually have a printed copy on their clipboard that they can scratch through. But if there is no wedding planner, it's not a bad idea to do that. It just ensures that you don't miss any of the photos on the photo list. However, if you do have your timeline on your phone, be careful not to get caught up in text messages or Instagram or email or whatever when you pick up your phone. Wear a watch, even so that if you wanna check your phone, you can look at your watch instead for the time. If you have an iWatch, that's great too. It's a very subtle way to keep in touch with your team, take note of the time and all of that good stuff. So I really like wearing my iWatch sometimes for the wedding day um, because it just helps me, you know, stay in tune to what's happening with our team without being distracted enough by my phone. When it comes to your wedding coverage, even though you have your timeline, I encourage you to arrive early and stay late. We always get there a little bit before our coverage time starts. We say hello, we introduce ourselves, we, we get to know who else is in the room. And then at the end of the night, we always say thank you and we depart a little bit after the guests are starting to leave. Um, so when you do create that timeline, just know that there's gonna be about 15 minutes on the front and about 15 minutes on the end that you're gonna be present and that's okay. When you're setting up babysitters or just planning your day, just know that um, about 30 minutes outside of that coverage time, you'll still be present during the wedding day. When it comes to post-processing, sneak peeks right now are huge. If you feel like you can't keep up with editing 20, 30, 40, 50 images after the wedding day, that's okay. Make sure that you're not over-promising to the client when they book. I usually tell clients that I will always get them about three to five images the week after the wedding. Those images might include just a few portraits of the couple or something that I know they will really, really want. Um, maybe it's family portraits as well. However, I do not promise the sneak peeks because I know in very busy seasons, like right now, we're in a very busy season, I'm unable to deliver 20, 30, 40 sneak peek photos. So, um, but I would encourage you to do at least a few portraits of the couple the week after the wedding so that they can share on social, print for their homes, so on and so forth. So have those put together. I think they'll really appreciate it. The last thing that I wanna talk about is the turnaround time. Standard turnaround time for wedding photography is about six to eight weeks, and you do not wanna miss that deadline. If you can come in a little bit early at four weeks or so, that's fine, but definitely don't come past the eight week mark. Clients are definitely waiting. They're excited to see their images, and so you don't wanna get them um, in a position where they're having to ask you about the photos. I also wouldn't suggest delivering them too early because they may be on their honeymoon or they may be expecting you know, that six or so week turnaround. And so you wanna to stick to your deadlines, be prompt, be consistent, and um, don't miss the deadline. So I hope you found this helpful. Good luck to you as you gear up to photograph your very first wedding. I hope that it is the very first wedding of a lifetime of weddings. I can still remember that feeling of being so nervous and just loving it, like knowing deep down that that was really what I wanted to do. And I hope that you're channeling that passion and you're excited for the start of your career. I have no doubt that if you're watching this video that you're someone who really cares and that you're someone who really wants to do well in this industry. So I wish you all the best. If you enjoy this content, please don't forget to subscribe and I will see you in the next video. I appreciate you and thank you so much for tuning in. Bye.